The 30th of January, 1933. Adolf Hitler is appointed Chancellor of Germany, bringing an end to German democracy. Guided by racist and authoritarian ideas, the Nazis abolish basic freedoms and seek to create a community which would unite all social classes and regions of Germany behind one Führer. The Third Reich quickly becomes a police state, where individuals are subject to arbitrary arrest and imprisonment. The Nazis effectively use propaganda to win the support of millions of Germans to facilitate persecution, war, and ultimately genocide. There is, however, some German opposition to the Nazi state, but critics of the Nazi regime would often pay the ultimate price for their defiance of the Führer. One of them is the sister of Erich Maria de Mark, the most hated author in Nazi Germany. Her name is Elfriede Scholz. Elfriede Scholz, the youngest of four children, was born as Elfriede Remarque on the 25th of March, 1903, in Osnabrück, then part of the German Empire. Her father, Peter Franz, was a bookbinder, and his wife, Anna Maria, was a housewife who dedicated her time to taking care of the children. As a child, Elfriede was often ill and was paralyzed for two years due to lack of red blood cells and weak bones. When her mother Anna Maria died of cancer on the 9th of September 1917, Elfrida was only 14 years old. Despite her health, Elfrida completed an apprenticeship as a tailor. She then ran her own salon, at first in Leipzig and from 1929 in Dresden. In January of the same year, her brother Erich Maria Remarque published in book form his novel All Quiet on the Western Front. The book describes the German soldiers' extreme physical and mental trauma during the war, as well as the detachment from civilian life felt by many upon returning home from the war. It became the best-selling work of fiction in America for the year 1929 and sold 2.5 million copies in 22 languages in its first 18 months in print. Remarque's realistic depiction of trench warfare from the perspective of young soldiers struck a chord with the war survivors, soldiers and civilians alike, and provoked strong reactions, both positive and negative, around the world. Remarque's harshest critics were his countrymen, many of whom felt the book denigrated the German war effort and that Remarque had exaggerated the horrors of war to further his pacifist agenda. The strongest voices against Remarque came from the emerging Nazi party and its ideological allies. In 1930, screenings of the Academy Award-winning film based on the book were met with Nazi-organized protests and mob attacks on both the movie theaters and audience members. Three years later, in January 1933, Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party came into power. However, the Nazi leaders wanted more than just political authority. They wanted to change the cultural landscape to promote what they considered to be traditional German and Nordic values, to remove what they called Jewish, foreign, and degenerate influences, and to shape a racial community which aligned with Nazi ideals. In the new Nazi Germany, a chief role of culture was to disseminate the Nazi worldview. One of the first tasks Nazi leaders undertook upon their ascension to power in early 1933 was a synchronization of all professional and social organizations with Nazi ideology and policy. The arts and cultural organizations were not exempt from this effort. Josef Goebbels, the Minister for Popular Enlightenment and Propaganda, immediately strove to bring the artists and cultural communities in line with Nazi goals. The government purged cultural organizations of Jews and others alleged to be politically or artistically suspect. At the initiative of the Nazi propaganda minister, Josef Goebbels, Remarque's writing was publicly declared as unpatriotic and was banned in Germany. Copies were removed from all libraries and restricted from being sold or published anywhere in the country. Beginning on the 10th of May 1933, Nazi-dominated student groups carried out public burnings of books they claimed were un-German. The book burnings took place in 34 university towns and cities, and works of prominent Jewish, liberal, and leftist writers ended up in the bonfires. Among the authors whose books student leaders burned were Bertolt Brecht, Ernest Hemingway, and Erich Maria Remarque. Nazi ideologies vilified Remarque's unflinching description of war, all quiet on the Western Front, as a literary betrayal of the soldiers of the World War. However, the true reason was that when the Nazis were remilitarizing Germany, Remarque's book was deemed counterproductive to German rearmament. The book burning stood as a powerful symbol of Nazi intolerance and censorship. 
In the aftermath, the Nazi regime raided bookstores, libraries, and publishers' warehouses to confiscate materials it deemed dangerous or un-German. The Nazi book burnings provoked international criticism from intellectuals and the press, who saw it as a barbaric act that was out of keeping with modern civilized society. Germany was rapidly descending into a totalitarian society, leading to mass arrests of elements of the population of which the new governing order disapproved. While Remarque left Germany to live at his villa in Switzerland, Elfrida remained in Germany. However, the Nazis did not forget about her brother. They claimed that he was Jewish, and they also made the false claim that he had not seen active service during World War I, despite the fact that he had been wounded in combat. In 1938, his German citizenship was revoked. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. In 1941, Elfrieda married the musician Heinz Schultz, and they had two children. Two years later, on the 2nd of February 1943, after months of fierce fighting and heavy casualties, the surviving German forces, only about 91,000 soldiers, surrendered Stalingrad on the Volga. The Battle of Stalingrad ended with a capitulation and near total loss of the 6th Army, which was regarded as the best field army in the Wehrmacht. Before the Germans surrendered, the propaganda minister Josef Goebbels had declared that the battle was a question of life or death, and all of German prestige, just as that of the Soviet Union, will depend on how it will end, and he was right. The battle for the city of Stalingrad proved a decisive psychological turning point, ending a string of German victories in the summer of 1942 and beginning the long retreat westward. Germany proved unable to defeat the Soviet Union, which together with Great Britain and the United States seized the initiative from Germany. Germany's defeat shattered its reputation for invincibility and dealt a devastating blow to German morale. On the 30th of January 1943, the 10th anniversary of its coming to power, Hitler chose not to speak. Instead, Josef Goebbels read the text of his speech for him on the radio. The speech contained an oblique reference to the battle, which suggested that Germany was now in a defensive war. The public mood was sullen, depressed, fearful, and war-weary. Elfriede Scholz made no secret of her critical stance toward national socialism and war. She told an acquaintance and customer at her tailoring shop that she did not believe in the propaganda of a German final victory, and that the German soldiers on the front were nothing but beasts for the slaughter. She also said she would kill Adolf Hitler. She made similar statements to her landlady. For these anti-state statements, as the Nazis called them, she would pay with her life. In the late summer of 1943, Elfriede Scholz was denounced, arrested, and then tried before the Nazi People's Court, which was infamous for its unfair political trials. The head of the court, Roland Freisler, was known as the Hanging Judge, as about 90% of his trials ended in death sentences. During the trial, Freisler told Elfrida, Your brother is unfortunately beyond our reach, but you will not escape us. On the 29th of October, 1943, the People's Court under Freisler sentenced Elfrida to death for allegedly subverting the war effort and aiding the enemy. Her two pleas for clemency were rejected, and before the execution, the Nazi shaved her head. Elfrida Schultz was 40 years old when she was beheaded by guillotine on the 16th of December 1943 in Berlin's prison. After the execution, her body was handed over to the anatomist Hermann Stiever, who used it for his research focused on the effect of stress and other environmental factors on the female reproductive system. Not satisfied with taking Elfrida's head off, the Nazi executioner sent a bill for 90 marks for her execution to her family. Erich Maria Remarque was unaware of his sister Elfrida's fate until after the war. At the time, he was in exile in the United States, where he had fled from Switzerland just before the outbreak of World War II in 1939. He only learned of Elfrida's death in June 1946, and in 1952, he dedicated his novel Spark of Life to her. He later said that his sister had been involved in anti-Nazi resistance activities. Elfrida's death sentence was not repealed until 1998 through the German law on the abolition of national socialist injustice in criminal law care. Elfrida's bravery is honored in Germany to this day, and in her native Osnabrück, a street bears her name. Her story 
as well as others like hers, serves as a beacon of courage in the face of the unjust and cruel forces in the world. There were many tears shed for Alfreda Schultz. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.